I'm Mitch Marks with HBK, and uh, today we're going to be going over current sensor cabling best practices. Um, so if you're if you're going to install, you know, a flux gate based current sensor, really any current sensor, um, these are just some tips and tricks. Uh, as you may or may not know, HBK supplies test and measurement equipment um, for the electric power world. So that means motors, inverters, um, really anything where you're measuring voltage, current, power, reactive power, parent power, power factor. And we're very good at it too. So let's jump in. So what is the problem? So if you have a, a current cable that's connected to an inverter, um, it's gonna submit a significant amount of electrical noise. Um, and for this reason, the currents or the, the cables are often shielded. So in my little uh, homemade animation here, I've got a conductor in, in my copper color uh, and then a gray shield around it. And what we see is that the conductor is gonna have a majority of the current going in a certain direction, um, but the shield is gonna to act to filter out all that EMC, that EMI, and it's gonna carry its own currents. And sometimes it might actually have some, some substantial currents in it. Um, and in addition to that, you know, we're gonna have electrostatic fields from the outside world, straight capacitances that the, that a, a shield is taking care of to protect the signal and, and that, that voltage and current carrying in the conductor that you know, is going to our motor. So these shields carry current. You know, this, this protective outer ring around the, the cable carries current. And, and current sensors, since the, the shield and the cable are potentially going through the aperture of that current sensor, and here we have a HBM current sensor, uh, you're gonna measure all of that. So you're gonna measure that current in the cable plus the current in the shield is gonna be that measured current, which is not the current we want, which is the current in the cable. Um, and now the other problem that becomes is unshielded measurement cables are subject to electrical noise. These high frequency inverters are, are just gonna uh, couple noise to whatever we're measuring. So here raises the question is how do we get a high integrity measurement with our shield in place um, and get it through these current sensors. So how do we measure the current in a shielded cable? That's, that's, the, that's the problem, that's the question. Well, um, we are gonna get a cabinet, a metal cabinet. Let's open that cabinet up, very proud of that animation. Um, and we're gonna route the shield around the sensor. So we, we, our, our cable is theoretically coming into the cabinet. We're gonna split that shield off we're gonna route that shield around the sensor, tie it back in, and then route it out of our cabinet. And we're gonna have a conductor, only, only the conductor going through the aperture of our current sensor. So we're just gonna be measuring that good current. That shield is gonna be completed, so we're not interrupting the circuit of, of the device. So we're not uh, allowing the device to pick up external noise. We have our metal enclosure. And this metal enclosure is picking up those electrostatic fields, those straight capacitances. Uh, we're going to practice proper grounding techniques with the door and with the cabinet. Um, so the sensors are in an EMC cabinet. It's grounded. The sensors are spaced to specification. And, and actually straight cables going through the sensor. We want straight runs through the sensor. Bus bars are your best you know, option. Um, if you actually start bending the cable, you get um, edging effects through the sensor. So we want straight runs. And we want our AC and our DC signals separated. We wanna separate our DC frequency stuff from our, from our AC frequency stuff. So we have our conductor going through the, through the measurement device. We have our shield routed around it. It's all in a cabinet. All right, now what does that look like in practice? Well, we wanna have one cabinet for our DC. That guy kind of sitting there protected on its own. Same practice, cable going through, shield routed around, boom, we're, we're cooking with gas. Then that's gonna go to our inverter <clears throat> and out of our inverter, we're gonna have our three phase shielded cables and boom, shield routed around each one of these. The spacing appropriate, straight runs through, um, and this is really gonna give us the highest signal integrity, proper grounding on all of those cabinets. Um, now let's talk about the measurement 
<clears throat> so the measurement cable itself. Um, so we've now got the information in the sensor. The sensor has gotten a really good signal. Now, how do we get that signal safely from the current sensor to the measurement amplifier? And the answer to that is, is we want to create a Faraday cage around the measurement. And it's actually the same thing that we were doing with the current sensor. So we want to have uh, our transducer properly grounded. We want to have a shield around the measurement cable. So we have that transducer, our current sensor. We want to have that measurement cable shielded. And we want to have that running to our amplifier. In this case, it would be our, our E-Drive system. Um, and have everything properly compensated, properly coupled, properly grounded. So we want that measurement to be protected by shielding by a Faraday cage the whole way. Now, what does that look like in practice? Because I don't really like that previous slide. Um, in practice, we have our inverter, we have our cables coming out and they're, these are not in the proper box, but, but one step at a time, it's really hard to animate all of those things in, in one picture. Um, we have the cabling coming out of the sensor and it's going to the amplifier. And we can see we have a really good cable making connection grouted through the outside. So the sensor itself is metal, that's a Faraday cage. The connection to um, the amplifier, that's a Faraday cage. We see that the DB9 coming in here to the, to the um, current transducer interface unit. Out of the current transducer interface unit, we have another cable, again, making that metal connection, keeping that Faraday cage around the measurement. And then from there, that's running into our E-Drive system. You see where it says Limo connector here. Again, we're getting that really good Faraday cage. We're making that proper grounding connection. And if we properly ground the unit, we are going to have a fantastic measurement chain. And if we follow that here, signal through the current sensor, shielded cable to the amplifier, shielded cable out to the measurement unit, proper grounding on the measurement unit, we create a Faraday shield around the signal. And if you can make your cable shorter, always do so. You're gonna prevent line inductances, line resistances, and you're just creating a smaller antenna to pick up noise. So put your current sensors in a cabinet, route the shield around the current sensor. And once the signal's in the sensor, make sure it's properly grounded all the way back to the measurement amplifier. With that, I'd like to thank you. And uh, if there's any questions, please feel free to scan this code here with your phone. Um, or if you wanna reach out to me directly, you can find me on LinkedIn. My name is Mitch Marks and I work at HPK. Thank you.